Hey guys, Garrett here from iOS Pro today. I'm going to show you guys how to install macOS Ventura and macOS Sonoma on any unsupported Mac from the years 2007 up to 2017. So let's get started. Alright guys, so in order to install macOS Ventura and Mac with Sonoma on unsupported Macs First thing, we'll need a USB stick at least 6 to 4 gig. Second, we're going to go to Safari and get this tool called Open Core Legacy Patcher. I forgot to mention that this does not work on all Macs, just certain ones. It's even more limited for, for Sonoma. I'll talk about that later. But for now, we're going to focus on Ventura. So first of all, we'll need a MacBook for 2008 to 2016 a MacBook Air for 2009 through 2017, a MacBook Pro for 2008 through 2016, mine is a 2015 13-inch model, so I have the right one, a Mac Mini for 2009 through 2017, an iMac for 2007 through 2016, and a Mac Pro for 2008 through 2018. You could also do Monterey, which is over here. More about that later. So now what we're going to do is go up to the top and click GitHub. This is what we're going to use to download it. Once we get to this page, we're going to go over to the right where it says releases. We're going to click this version right here, 0.67. We're going to go down to the bottom where it says assists. But if you have anything running Catalina and earlier, you won't be able to load this download button page. So in order to download this tool on anything running Catalina and earlier, we'll need to do the USB transfer method from a newer computer. So basically, we're going to click this button called Open Core Patcher GUI.app.zip. Click this button right here. And now it's going to download. So the, I'm going to show you guys how to do the transfer method from one computer to the other for anything earlier than Big Sur. So Big Sur or newer can load us no problem. So now what we're going to do is plug our USB stick in if you guys have a model that's running Big Sur or newer, you will not have to do this USB transfer method. This is only for computers that can't load this button page right here. So now we're going to go to Finder on our newer Macs, go to Downloads. We're going to transfer this to the no name. Sorry, my trackpad's sticky. So now we're get, it's now it's being transferred right here, as you guys can see. And that's pretty much it. Once it's transferred, you can eject this. Plug it, into, plug it into your older Mac, then open up tool. Very simple. So this is only for Macs that cannot run Big Sur or newer. Just a heads up of that. Because I actually tried this on Mojave and High Sierra, and the button just spun and spun. It just wouldn't download. It wouldn't give me the option to download. Transfer has finished. This method is only for computers that cannot load the assist buttons. That's it. Or give you a cannot establish secure connection error. So now, once it is done, then if you guys want to do Sonoma, then you'll have to go to this link right here just to get the download page installer right here. See, macOS Sonoma beta full installer. We're going to click that button. This is only if you want to take the risk to install Sonoma on a computer that's not meant to. Believe me, it is worse on Sonoma than Ventura. And the install system has finished downloading 13 gigabytes. That's how big the app installer is for the installer app itself. But before I go on, I want to give a big disclaimer about doing Sonoma as of right now. See, if you guys didn't see it, I actually posted about this on my Twitter where I said I got Sonoma on 2015 MacBook Pro. And I said it doesn't work very well because for a few things, actually. First of all, I actually told one, someone who what the issues were. Grayed out Wi-Fi where the Wi-Fi was totally disabled. The screensavers that are meant to work on Sonoma don't work. It only shows the lock screen rebooted, like the wallpaper. Even if I put the lid down, it won't go to sleep. That is some risk I take with doing Sonoma. So if you want a usable computer, only do Ventura through the open core. You can actually download their open core. All right, so when we do this, go ahead and open the installer for if you want to install Sonoma. Click continue. Click continue again. Install. I'm going to enter my password. now. I, it's going to install. With it successfully installed, you hit close. There you go, launch pad, and there we go. There's the installer. So now I go to my applications, 
it's right there. This is where it has to be if you use an existing installer already built. So now what we're gonna do, on a computer that has OpenCore Patro installed, you just double click that. And now what it's gonna do, after a few seconds here, it's gonna verify OpenCore Patcher. Totally normal. We're gonna hit open. And there we go. I forgot, you need to keep the USB drive reconnected to your computer at all times. Make sure you have nothing on it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this since I don't need it because I have a computer that could run this just fine. So now what we're gonna do right here at this tool, we zoom in, we're gonna click create macOS installer. Here's the important part. If you're planning to install Sonoma, click this button called use existing. The reason is it can actually detect whether or not you have a installer in your applications folder. This is only for Sonoma. Very important to know that. What I'm gonna do is do is hit click download macOS installer. Basically, it's gonna give me a few options right here for this computer. First one is macOS 11, macOS 12, and macOS 13. I can also click show all available installers. You see, there is quite a lot here. You see, as of right now, Sonoma is not here yet because they haven't tested it enough. They're in the process of testing Sonoma, the developer. So once the developers have updated this, to work with Sonoma, then it'll work just fine. I would recommend doing macOS installer 13.4. So it's about 11 gigabytes to download. So I'll come back when this is done downloading. All right guys, so I'm back and the downloading piece of it has finished. But once it's done validating the chunks of 11.25, it's gonna ask you to input your password to extract the installer. I right, so I'm back and now my computer is gonna extract the macOS installer that's downloaded after we enter the password. This could take a few minutes, so I'll come back when it's done. I saw it back, and my computer has finished extracting the installer. And now it says, would you like to continue and create the macOS installer? We're going to click yes. And now it's going to ask us, select local macOS installer. We're going to collect install macOS 13.4. We're going to click that button. And now it's going to ask us to select a local disk, which is the USB. We're going to click that. Click yes, so it's gonna erase the USB and install the files we need. Now it's gonna ask me to enter my password. I just entered my password and now the tool is gonna to create the installer for Ventura. It's at least 14 to 17 gigabytes all, all together. So it doesn't count in gigabytes, it counts in megabytes. So when this says 17,000 to 18,000 megabytes, then it'll be done. This could take at least 30 minutes on slower USB drives, which is the one I have plugged in here. It's not a 3.0, it's a 1.0. We'll notify you when the installer is ready. This could take at least half an hour to 35 minutes. Pretty long time. All right guys, so I'm back and the installer has finished. That took at least 36 minutes. That took a long time. So now it asked, would you like to continue and install the open core to the disk? This is very important for the step after you install Ventura. Very important. Click yes. And now, we're going to click Install to Disk. So now, what we're going to select right here, when it asks us where we want to install it, we're going to select the USB drive, which is this one. It can actually tell you which is which. Cruiser Glide, that's the name of the drive. We're going to select this one. Select it. And now, I'm going to ask me to enter my password to install it. back, and I just successfully entered my password. So now after the open core transfer is complete to the USB drive, see, and now says install macOS Ventura. So now we're gonna do click ignore and we're gonna restart the computer manually. So by holding the power button until it powers off. Once we do this, we're gonna we'll hold option like this. Then we're gonna go ahead and tap and hold the power button until it boots up. Sometimes it takes a couple tries. Okay, there we go. While holding the option key, it'll boot into recovery mode, like this. So what we're going to do here is go over and select EFI boot. Click enter. Now we're going to install Mac with Ventura. Click install. We're going to click return I meant, sorry. So now what it's going to do here is it's going to start booting into Mac OS recovery, allowing us to install this, which is totally normal. All right, guys, so I'm back. My computer is now successfully in recovery mode. 
So once we get to this screen, it will look all shrunk. This is actually a glitch because now it's syncing. It's plugged into a 42 inch Mac display, which is totally normal. Once we boot into Vitura and install the driver and the patches at the end, this will be fixed. First, we go to Disk Utility, click Volumes. This will have to erase. We're going to click Erase. Now we're going to erase the Macintosh HD. Click Erase. And now it's going to erase the disk, which is totally normal. Oh, and I would highly recommend having a bootable version of Monterey or the current system you came from and on hand in case this fails. Just a heads up. And you can actually go check that out on my other video. I have that link in the description below so you can see how to create a boot bootable drive just in case this fails. So now with the disk erased, we're going to go back here, click Install Ventura. It just takes a second to load here. That is expected while doing this. It's going to be kind of slow. Click Continue. Yeah, sometimes it'll hang just for a second. That's kind of expected when you're doing this on an older computer. It's going to hang and lag sometimes. It's not a big deal, but it will still go through the menus normally. We're going to click Agree. Now we're going to select Macintosh HD. Continue. So now what it's going to do is Mac with Ventura will now be installed on the disk Macintosh HD. So once it's going to switch to the install screen, every time it restarts, it's going to show the list of hard drives you can put it into. Just do not touch it at all times. Let it do its thing. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about when it boots into the install screen. All right, guys, so I'm back on my computers. Now we're starting. You guys, see, it'll do this at first. Don't touch it because you'll see why. See, if you don't touch it, it'll go to your install screen like normal, which is totally expected. It'll, every time it reboots, do not touch that screen. Just let it do its thing all the way until the end. Alright guys, so I'm back and the install has completed and as you guys see, my computer is no longer shrunk and the trackpad is working smoothly. So we're going to continue, click not now, and as you guys can see, the available Wi-Fi's are now here. So if you install Sonoma, the Wi-Fi will not work at all. So you can actually click this button right here called other options. If you don't have Wi-Fi available or if your Wi-Fi gets disabled, you can click this option called Other, then my computer does not connect to internet. That you only do that if you're going to Sonoma, because Wi-Fi does not work when you use Sonoma. I'm back and I got my Wi-Fi all connected. We're gonna hit Continue. When it says Migration Assistant, hit Not Now. So I'm gonna skip the Apple ID step for now. Agree to Terms and Conditions. So let me go and get my account all set up. Went back and my account's not created. So in order to fix the time and date, you see my time is actually 5.53. It's actually in Cupertino time. So what we're going to do is click Enable, and that will fix the time once we're done. So now we're gonna, I'm going to share my analytics, click Continue, set screen time up later. I'm going to use Siri here, hit Continue. Now I'm going to choose the voice, which is voice number four. Voice 4 is the default voice for Siri, 100%. Click Continue. I'm not going to do that and click Not Now. Continue. And you guys see at the top, my clock has been reset to Cupertino to Fountain Time. It's no longer in California time up there. I'm going to click Dark. Just like that. Hit Continue. Now it should. Yeah, there we go. Now we're on Mac OS. Ventura, just like this. So there is another step we'll have to go through once we're done here. So in a second here, it should pop up in menu here. So I'll come back when the message comes up. Oh, never mind. There we go. You see? Once this message comes up, we'll, it'll say Open Lexi Patcher has detected that you're booting from Open Core from a USB or, or an external drive. If you would like to boot Mac normally without a USB drive plugged in, you can install open core to the internal drive 
Would you like Open Core Legacy to patch your to install to the disk? Click OK. And now I'm click Install to Disk. So now once it gets to this screen, we're going to select the Apple SSD. Click that. Now I'm going to go in and enter my password, not come back when I'm done. Go back and the transfer to the main disk has finished. Now we're going to go in and eject, eject the install macOS Ventura because we don't need it anymore. So now if we click reboot, it should like boot us into the operating system without us having to select it manually. Because I, if we don't do that transfer, then restart. Without this, it will boot the other system. So now, if I'm right about this, it should boot normally. So once it gets to this, do not touch it. Just let it do its thing. See, now it's gonna boot directly into the hard drive on its own. Sometimes it'll hang on the upload, but then do that. It's totally normal here. So I'm not gonna cut this portion of the video. I want you guys to see really how long it takes to boot up. Yeah, so the, this does take a while depending on the computer you're using. So once that keyboard lights up, you're all good to go. And just like that, we booted back into Ventura. And I forgot to tell you, the computer will choose the screen image for your profile every time you do this. I saw it back and my computer has now logged in. And just like that, I'm now running Mac OS Ventura. So now I'll go to settings here. The apps do get a little delayed. Go to general, about, and as you guys can see, we're on Mac OS Ventura. And now says we're using a good display here, 13.3 inch display to 2015 model. But you see right here, but here's the thing. If you go to software update, if you sign into your iCloud account, switch on the beta tab, you can install the beta if you want to, but do not do that. Otherwise, this computer will be bricked. I actually tried that myself. My computer failed to boot, so I had to go all the way back to Montreal and start all over again. Well, that's why you shouldn't do that. And also, let me show you guys something here. I actually have a secondary computer running Sonoma, my personal one. You guys see, I actually have a computer running Sonoma. This is my main laptop, the one I use daily, that's actually supported on Sonoma. This one is an older one. My sister's the one I restored. She let me keep it after I restored it. So that's why I'm using this one, because this one does not support the software. All right, so that is how you install macOS Ventura and Sonoma on older computers. But Sonoma, not recommended. But you can still do it if you want to. Just be aware that your computer may not be usable. That's why I recommend a Ventura. It's usable. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. This video. Peace out.